If you know this channel, you better comment right now. What car are we missing here in the middle? I know one of you knows. What's going on, guys? Today, we are going to go over a full ultimate survival guide on the BMW M5 E60. Basically, everything I've done over the past seven or eight years that has kept this car running for basically 20 years at this point. This car turned 17 this year. It's a 2006. It's almost 20. It's getting super old. But let's get this thing unwrapped, and I'm going to go through everything I've done maintenance wise and just even day-to-day -day cleanliness and little things that really prolong the life of this notoriously unreliable bmw now in the last video we just got a paint correction on the m5 so it is glistening and uh there is tons of leaves here so this is gonna break my heart but we gotta do what we gotta do i'm almost like scared to drive it at this point oh my goodness it is looking brand new. So obviously if we're making a survival guide on the M5 E60, it's clear it's not the most reliable car in the world. But as you can see, we are a family known for that, except for the Porsche, that thing is pretty reliable. But not only is this a V10, this 760 Li is a V12. So if there's something we know about scary engines and unreliable BMWs, we are the experts. So one of the very first things that I would say to keep this car alive for an extended period of time, it should come automatically, and most car guys will know this, but some may not, is that let the damn car warm up. I know so many people that get in their car, basically turn it on, jump out the driveway and go. It is not how it works with this car, especially with age. I'm gonna start this thing up for you right now. And with all the different systems that this thing needs to warm up, the Vano system, obviously the V10 engine, all that, you cannot simply click and go with this car. And you will hear why right now. So I haven't started this in probably like three, four days. Should be fine. system cycling up here at the front. Let's see if I can get that on. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But that kind of high pitched mechanical noise is the Vanos pump kicking in and the rest of the engine warming up. I usually let this thing sit for like four to six minutes in my driveway, sometimes even up to 10, to really make sure that it is getting warmed up before we drive it anywhere. And that is a lot of the human day-to-day -day things you can do with this car, is simply not clicking a lot of buttons, not using a lot of the settings, not pushing it too hard before you let the car warm up. I'm sure it comes as automatic to some, not to others. So, I don't know if you can hear that, but the Vano system is already kind of warmed up and it changes the tone once it does warm up. It doesn't blow so hard, you don't hear that mechanical screech. And after six to eight minutes, you kind of know, okay, this thing is good to drive. So definitely tip number one, especially with an older car, a V10 engine, the unreliability that this thing is known for, is let the damn car warm up. Next tip I would say with an engine like this, that is now coming up to 20 years old, you want to make sure you're using the right oil in the M5 E60. And the oil I use is, Try not to spill it all over my yard. Liquamali SAE 10W60 motor oil, Synth Oil Race Tech GT1. Especially if you live in a climate that gets hot and cold and you got a lot of temperature changes, which this car does not do well in, the 10W60 oil is the way to go. It's gonna keep your engine running smoothly. It's gonna keep things nice and cool. And the thing to remember about the M5 E60 that I've noticed, especially after owning it for seven years, it almost turning 20 here soon, is that this V10, loves to burn oil. On long trips, I've made it a habit of just checking the oil before I go. If it's around one liter, that's exactly where you wanna be. By the end of the trip, say three hour drive, it can dip down anywhere between 0.8 and 0.6 of a liter. So you just got to top it up. Something really easy to forget if you don't keep an eye on it, if you don't keep it a habit. So filling up your oil on the M5 E60 and using 10W60 oil 
I use the Liquid Molly brand. It's super good, a little expensive, but obviously worth it. That's what I would recommend. Now a trick my dad taught me, which I don't know the science behind this or why, I'm sure somebody on the comments here will, uh, with this car, with any older car that's starting to run a bit rougher maybe, is filling it up as soon as it gets to a quarter tank. I do not let this car dip below a quarter gas anymore. I find it drives really, really rough when we get anywhere under a quarter especially after I've let the car sit for the whole winter, the first thing I do is I go rip it on the road to burn off any of that old crusty gas that has been sitting in the tank for an entire winter, a few months. And then I immediately go fill it up. And then anytime I'm driving it, I do not let this thing drop anywhere below a quarter. Couldn't tell you exactly why, but it does seem to run better. Jesus. On higher gas. And obviously getting 91 or 93, Nothing below that. You want to do only the best of the best in this. But I think that goes without saying. Now, again, going back to warming up the car and things not to do when you are warming it up or not to do before it being warmed up. Uh, and there's three. The first one I do is I do not turn on the air conditioning until the car is warmed up, until it's sat for at least 10 minutes and I've driven it. I usually wait until I see the oil temperature hit 210 right there in the middle. After that, it's usually fine. I find the car runs really rough if it's trying to warm up the engine and blasting the AC at you at the same time before the thing's even been running or warmed up at all for the day. So get your car warmed up, drive for 10 minutes or so before you turn on the AC. Kind of sucks on a hot day. I know it was like 32 degrees Celsius here the other day and I was dying, but for those first 10 minutes, you just got to commit. Don't turn on your AC, let the thing warm up nice. And it's just going to prolong the life of this car. Next two things that you shouldn't do before warming up the car, they're super simple, is keep your shift sensitivity at the minimum or at the normal default. I believe it's three out of five um, on the button here. Do not put it up and start shifting crazy sensitively before the car's warmed up. Let the SMG transmission, let the SMG pump do its thing, warm up. Do not just do it cold and start shifting like crazy and having that shift sensitivity be so high that you're kicking in the second and third super fast. I just don't think it's super healthy for the car when this thing hasn't warmed up. You gotta treat it like the old gal that it is and it's gonna treat you well right back. So another tip to uh, prolong this car as much as possible. And on that note, the other thing I don't do before warming up the car is I do not hit the M button, which basically takes off all the horsepower regulators, um, traction control, anything, all the settings, however you've programmed it, basically turns this car into the Formula One inspired race car it was meant to be. But I do not turn on the M button before warming up the car either. All these things, basically not touching the car before it's warmed up. I know it sounds automatic, trust me, but it is something that it is going to add years to the car and it's going to save you so much money. If you Google BMW M5 E60 or if you go on YouTube and click BMW M5 E60, 10 of the first 20 videos are basically saying, you know, I bought a BMW and it shit the bed right away. I bought a BMW M5. You shouldn't like 10 reasons not to buy a BMW. BMW M5 tow truck not included. That was like the first video I ever saw when I Googled my car. And I've actually been really lucky with this M5. It's a 2006, it's the first model year, which is the one that's notoriously bad for the most problems because it was pre-LCI, pre-facelift, and the first year of any production car is always the most unreliable. But because the previous owner and myself have taken such good care of it, and we put in the work to maintain it, just day after day, the little stuff that I'm mentioning, along with the bigger maintenance, this thing has been running really smooth especially the past two years. It's almost gotten better since we've done a few more repairs. And that's what I wanted to talk about next is actually some maintenance that I've done to the car. The top four things that I think you should do to any M5, invest that extra money. If it's a car you're gonna have forever, it's gonna treat you well if you invest in these four things to maintain. And number one is rod bearings. These are known to fail on the M5. It is worth doing, or at least checking. If you're going to buy an M5, if you're interested in it, ask the previous owner, see if you can get a receipt. How recently? have the rod bearings been replaced. And if not, I think that would be the first thing I would get checked at the shop is the condition and then go ahead and replace them. Spend that couple grand and do it because if those go and you're sitting in that car, say, see you later. The transmission, the SMG pump on this is also notoriously unreliable. I would have loved to get a manual M5, but of course they're very hard to find and they drive the price way up on a manual. So I went with the SMG. And yes, it is true the SMG pump has gone twice on me. Um, within the same year, we got a used one, conked out, 
Got a second one. That one's been fine ever since. First one cost me, I think, like two grand. It was like three grand job total. The second one, the SMG pump and the transmission, we had to do like a full replacement. It was like five or six grand. Ever since then, that's been the biggest problem with the M5. And yes, it sounds like a huge bill, but after owning it for seven years, it's about $1,000 a year. It really brings that price way down considering all the fun I've had with this car. And the fact that I've got to drive it for seven plus years when I could have gotten a way newer M5 without those problems, but paid upwards of 50, 60, 70, 80 grand instead of paying, <laughs> I got this car for 17,000 Canadian dollars. It's insane. Crazy deal, I know. But when I say that price, then it makes sense to invest in the SMG pump. Another thing that really likes to go on this car is that Vano system. Mine hasn't gone yet, but it's something I am keeping an eye on because that is gonna be another big investment if this thing decides to conk out on me. Not much you can do there in terms of preventative maintenance, unless you're willing to get a brand new one um, or buy a new one to replace it. Uh, but just something to be aware of if you start having troubles with the car, with the startup, with the drive of the car, get the Vano system checked. It is something that is going to cause issues down the road. And if you're aware of it, again, survival guide, it's going to increase the survivability and the life of this thing. Now, another big one on the M5 E60 and something that I've been encountering as we speak is the throttle actuator on the M5. So that is basically what keeps the RPMs maintained when the thing is idling, it keeps everything, it keeps the rev stable, all that kind of stuff. And the issue that my M5 has right now that I do need to get checked out is it occasionally has a super rough idle when I start up the car. So what that means is this car likes to hover right around 0.5 to 1 RPM, and it's usually pretty stable. But sometimes when it gets hot, I will see that needle come up to 0.5, jump up to 1, back down to 0.5, up to 1, down to 0.5. And it's just that actuator is not finding that stable idle RPMs that it wants to be at. And again, drives very rough, can sit very rough in that state, especially when it's really hot out and this car runs pretty hot anyway. I actually have had the car conk out on me a few times, twice in one drive actually it was not super fun. Um, basically I drove it on the highway for 45 minutes. I got off the highway. And when it was driving at high RPMs, it was fine. But then when the car was sitting at a light, it could not find the right RPMs. And then the system and then the computer kicks in, thinks something's wrong. And so it just shuts down the car. So it, cont so it just kept stalling on me. I would basically throw it in neutral and then with my foot, rev it up to like two RPM while we were just sitting there and then get it off the road as soon as possible. Car cooled down and then we got home and it was fine. But throttle actuator on this channel too is gonna be probably our next repair maintenance wise. For the m5 but if i can give you my final thoughts kind of like in a nutshell with this car it gets a super bad rep and uh i'm trying my best to change that again we are a huge car family again what are we missing here i know my subscribers know uh we got the 911 over there and then we got the v12 760 li here and a couple suvs and trucks that are missing because they're out on the street because i got to get out and we only have one lane so we always gotta move the cars around but what i'm trying to say is I think I sort of know what I'm talking about. I've had this thing for seven years and do not believe the rumors. I believe it comes down to each model and that owner as well. I think these things get a really bad rep because probably that first wave of owners didn't take care of the car really well and they gave up as soon as those problems started arising. And so these things have just been sitting broken for years. So of course they're not gonna run great. But if you get a good M5 E60 with a good previous owner and then you yourself do the maintenance, do the little things I just mentioned about warming it up. That's the easiest, most important one. Keeping the oil full, using the right oil, getting the maintenance on those four things I mentioned done. All those things will extend the life of this car tremendously. And at the end of the day, it sounds bad, but you're still paying less than you would for any other M5 on the market right now. This is the cheapest one you can buy. It's crazy. Again, I've got this for 17. I've probably put nine or 10K into it. So call it 27 and I've owned it for seven years. And the craziest thing is these things are starting to appreciate in value, which means the price is going up. So if you're interested in one or if you wanna know more about it, start looking into them now because I think they're just gonna to continue to go up. We've been running great for the past few years. It has 235,000 kilometers on it. Absolute workhorse. And it's because I've taken care of it. And now you know how to as well. So I hope that helps you. The survival guide on the M5 E60, everything you need to know. And there it is. I really need to clean up my apparel by enemy stock, 
But we do have some new hoodies in here. We got the NSX hoodie here. Uh, we got some leftover Champs hoodies here. If you guys made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. As I just mentioned there, we have BMW M5 E60 Ts now exclusively available at apparelbyenemy.com, my car clothing brand. Tons of stuff on there. You're gonna find something that you want 100%. Thank you guys so much for all the support on that. I hope you like the car. Let me know what you think in the comments. And did this guide help you? I'm really trying to save the name of the M5 E60. It gets such a bad rep, um, but we're changing it here on this channel together. It is so hot in my room. I do not have AC in here. It's ridiculous. But thank you guys. Make sure you like and sub. Lots of new stuff coming to the M5. I believe we have a new mod on the way in the mail um, for the M5 for next video. So something cool there. I am also doing a rating subscriber cars video coming up soon. So hit me up on Instagram, DM me the make model of your car, how much you got it for, all the mods that have been done to it, and obviously pictures as well. And I will rate your car in a video right here on this channel. Can't wait to see all your builds. Love you guys so much as always. My name's Chris. See ya.